Hello, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube, and today we are learning the very basics of editing. Just the most silly, basic video. If you've never done video editing before and you're just like, I have something something camera and it goes into a computer somehow, this is the video for you. By the end of this, you're gonna be like, I kinda know how this works. And I don't know why you talk in that voice, but you do. Let's go. Let's get started with the very first kind of concept, which is what is editing? Editing has kind of grown over the years uh, from meaning like literally just putting your shots together in a timeline, putting your shots in order, and making sure that the shots that you have are the ones that you want, to doing all of that and doing effects and doing audio and doing color correction and all of that stuff. But we are going to focus mostly on just the putting things in order, the honest to goodness editing side of things today. And so editing is just that. It's taking the pieces of media from whatever you've produced, whether it's shooting with your camera, animation, music, audio, pictures, slideshow, wh whatever it is, and it's putting them all together in a sequence so that you actually have something to watch. Without editing, most things that you watch would be really boring or just wouldn't make any sense at all. Because oftentimes, if you have a movie, it won't actually be shot in order. So looking at the trailer for Storks, obviously the greatest movie of all time, this is obviously an animated movie, so they didn't shoot it, but they still have to create all of the scenes, and they certainly didn't render every scene in order, right? But every scene, imagine if you shot this, you'd have a shot of this, and then you'd have to move the camera and get set up and relight and do all of these things for this shot. And so you have to cut out the parts that are boring or that don't work for the story, and then you have to put them in order. So really, for a story to exist, for a video to actually make any sense, you have to edit it. The only time you might not actually need to edit is if it's literally just one shot and it's somebody telling a story from beginning to end without very many screw ups, you know, something like a YouTube vlog or something. But for any kind of visual storytelling, there needs to be quite a bit of editing. So as far as the software that you use to edit with, there are a ton of different choices. A really popular one is Adobe Premiere. We also have Final Cut Pro, which is only available on Mac. We have Vegas Pro, we have one called Filmora. There's one for iPad called Luma Fusion, and there's DaVinci Resolve. And there's like probably 20 or 30 other editors that will probably edit video just fine. These are kind of the big ones. And which one you pick isn't really going to affect the type of stories that you tell, the type of videos that you make too much, just because they all use the same basic concepts. Some of them might have more features, some of them might have uh, different price points, that kind of thing. But Resolve has a place where you put your clips and then you put your clips into the timeline and you edit them, right? LumaFusion has a place to put your clips, and then you put them into the timeline and edit them. Filmora has the same thing, a place to put your footage and a timeline to edit them. Vegas, same thing. Final Cut Pro, media and timeline. Premiere, your media goes here and you throw it on the timeline. So the good news is that no matter what you pick, they all work in a very similar way. For this video, we're gonna be using Resolve 17 because it's a super powerful video editor. It's the one I use all the time and they have an insanely good free version. It's not a trial or anything like that. You can literally just use the free version for as long as you want and make commercial work for it. And there aren't really any drawbacks. It's just awesome. To download it, you go to blackmagicdesign.com and go up to support and click on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion Software and find the latest version right here under latest downloads. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Just click on whichever one you want, download it and install, and you'll have Resolve on your system. So what I'm gonna do today is build a sequence a lot like this, and we're gonna learn how editing works through building this. So let's look a little bit, first of all, about how Resolve works. The first time you open Resolve, you're gonna get a window like this. This is called your project manager. And what this does is it just holds all of your projects, anything that you're working on. This is how you import new projects. This is where you save your current projects, duplicate projects, all of that stuff. It's just a window where things live. So you can right click anywhere here in the blank space and select new project, and it'll ask you what you want to call it. So I'll call this basic editing and hit create. What that'll do is close that project manager and bring you into an interface that looks like this. A couple things to note about Resolve is that Resolve is broken up into pages. So down here on the bottom, there are these buttons. And what these do is switch out the interface to do different jobs. Right now we're in the edit page, which is great because that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing today. But there are different pages for different parts of making our movie. So when we do color correction, can switch to color mode. When we want to do a bunch of audio work, we can switch to fair light mode. For fancy effects and everything, that's fusion. But we're just gonna stay in the edit page 
We even have a cut page here, which works a lot like the edit page. And we might jump back and forth here, which works a lot like the edit page and is definitely worth checking out. But for now, we're going to stay in the edit page. So when we talk about editing, I like to compare it to cooking, but I also like to compare it to telling a story because it's kind of both. It's almost like you're cooking a story. So let's say we're writing a story. Let's say we have a character named Jessica and she does something. She rode her horse at sunset on Tuesday. So we have our little story here. Jessica rode her horse at sunset on Tuesday. We can edit this just like we would edit a story by taking out certain parts. Let's say we don't care if it's at sunset, we can just take out at sunset and we can just say that Jessica rode her horse on Tuesday. If you can get your head around that, if you can kind of understand that you have that freedom to be able to change the story by taking out words, putting in new words, that kind of thing, video editing works the exact same way. We can change the story by taking things out, splitting things up or moving them around. We could even introduce new characters, Jessica and Ben, rode her horse on Tuesday. We can easily change the story just by taking parts out, moving them around, that kind of thing. So video editing is sort of like this, but it's also kind of like cooking because when you talk about video editing, you really need to have videos to edit. So if you're gonna tell a story like this, you would need a shot of Jessica and a shot of Ben or a shot of them together, a shot of them riding their horse, some way to tell that it's Tuesday. Maybe it's a calendar, maybe it's you know a shot of their phone that says Tuesday. You kind of need each of these things in order to tell the story, you can't necessarily just write them. So in this way, it's kind of like cooking because you need ingredients to put together to make something to eat, right? Each of these ingredients we're going to call media. Media is something that you've recorded. In Resolve, media lives in the media pool, which is over here on the left-hand side in the edit page. This is just a place where you can put all of your audio and video and all the ingredients to your story, and you're just kind of laying them out on your counter and kind of getting ready to work on them. So let's do that. There's a few different ways to get media into Resolve. One way is you can right click here in the media pool and go down to import media. You could also go up to file and say import media. Or my favorite way, you can open up an explorer window like this and shift select all of your videos and drag them into the media pool just like this. So now we have some of our ingredients for our story. These are all the different shots for this movie that we wanna make about this guy who climbs mountains near the sea. And that's really cool. And you'll notice if you mouse over these, you can see a preview, a big preview on this screen here. And so you can kind of just mouse over them and pretty quickly see what is in each clip which makes it really easy to kind of understand all of the media that you have available. But just like if we're cooking, if we have something on the counter, say like a piece of celery, what we're probably gonna wanna do is cut it up or work with it in some way. So you can think about this as kind of the counter and then the timeline down here, this is your cutting board. This is where you actually kind of work with things where you literally cut things in half and move them around and combine them with other things. So let's just grab this first clip and I'll drag this into the timeline, which is kind of like putting the ingredient on the cutting board. Once we have our media in our timeline, you'll notice we have this bright red line here. This is our playhead. Just like if you play a YouTube video, there's a little bar that goes across. This is the bar that goes across your video here in the timeline. So if we hit space bar, we can play this back and it moves across. And then up here in the upper right hand corner, we can see a preview of what is going on. This viewer up here, this is what your movie is really going to look like. So this is what the person who watches your project is actually going to see. But the cool thing is that we don't have to just watch this. We can actually change a bunch of things about this piece of media because it's down here in the timeline. It's down on the cutting board, right? So we can actually do stuff like cut this in half. So if I go to our toolbar in the middle of the screen here and I grab this blade, I can select that. And now my cursor turns into a razor blade and I can just click wherever I want and chop up this video. The reason you do that is so that you can move different parts around or you can get rid of parts. So you can just select it and hit backspace or you can click and drag them around the timeline and you can use these different parts to build your story. If you're just on your normal selection mode, you can actually grab an edge of a clip and when it turns into this little bracket and that edge turns green, you can make it shorter or longer. So you have two tools already, you can chop it, and you can adjust that part that you chopped. Now, something to note, if it turns green, you can go crazy all you want and move it back and forth. But if it turns red, it means you're at the end of the clip. That means that there just isn't any more media there. There isn't, you can't go back in time, right? A clip is only so long. And it actually shows you a little preview there of how long the actual clip is in that little white outline. And so you can make it as big as the clip actually was. 
or as small as you want. So if we were gonna combine this with another clip, let's say this one of him messing with these carabiners, you can grab this and drag it onto our cutting board again. Maybe I'll select some of these clips down here and get rid of them. I can drag this over and I can just click on this ruler and that'll control where my playhead goes and I can kind of scrub through this and find exactly the parts that I wanna show. I wanna show him actually clipping stuff on, so let's start right there. So I can go down here and grab the edge of this and have that just start right where my playhead is. And then I'll move down here to where he unclips stuff and that's where I want it to end. And I could do a couple things. I could grab my blade and just blade it right there and delete the last part of this or I could grab the edge of this and just trim it to be that length. And honestly, that is most of editing, is just getting your head around the concept of, you can put media in the timeline, and you can adjust what part of the media that we wanna see. So we wanna see just this part where he's just taking a couple steps, and then we wanna see just this part where he's unlatching that carabiner, and then we can put these together in sequence to build a story. So if I grab this second clip, and I bring it a little bit closer to this other clip, it's going to snap in place. And you can control that by clicking this little button right here, the magnet. If the magnet's bright white, things will snap. If it's gray, it won't. And a lot of things in Resolve actually act like that. If they're white, they're active. And if they're gray, they're not active. So I can grab all of this and move it all the way to the left because this is right when our movie starts on this far left-hand side. And if there is nothing there, then we're gonna be watching black for a while. We're just gonna be watching black space. And you generally don't want that in your videos. You want it to start right off. You don't want to have any gaps. And so now it's just a matter of putting all of these shots in order to tell a story. So let's say we wanted to make a really basic story like, okay, he walks up to the cliff. Then what happens? Um, let's find out what happens next. Let's go through our footage here. We don't have a shot of him getting onto the rock, but maybe we have one of him climbing a little bit lower, which might be right here. Oh, this is him hooking up. So maybe he hooks up his ropes. So that's what happens next. And then he starts to climb, which by the way, if you want to, you can double click on a piece of footage right here and load it up here in the source viewer, which is this left screen right here. And this is just like looking at something. Think about like picking up something and looking at it before you put it on the cutting board. That's kind of what we're doing. Now that I've decided I like that, I can actually just grab the middle of this and then drag it down into the timeline again and trim it to what I want and put it in sequence, right? So now we have our story of he walks up to the cliff, he ties up, and he starts to climb. Now let's say he climbs a little bit higher. Let's use this clip where he's climbing a lot higher, drag that down, same thing. And we can trim it to be a little bit shorter. And really you just continue that until you've told your whole story. Couple tips. Let's say we wanna use this clip here but maybe we know we just wanna use a little tiny bit of it, right? Maybe we just wanna use this beginning. We can actually make a selection here in the source viewer so that we don't drag down the entire clip like this, see how long it is? We just drag down a little piece of it. And the way that we do that is with something called in and out. So at the very beginning, we're gonna set an in, which you can do by clicking this little button right here. This is called mark in. And that will set just kind of the start of our clip that we're gonna use in the timeline. We can play this back. Maybe we like that. And then we can hit mark out, and that's gonna be the end of the clip. You can see here there's this little gray bar, and this will show the in and the out of our clip. Now, if we have that set, we can grab the middle of this again and drag it down, and now it only drags that little section that we selected down. So this is great if you have a much longer clip and you just want part of it. And once you get used to working like this, you can move through this really fast. You can even start to use keyboard shortcuts because on the keyboard, if you hit I, that's the same as clicking this button. It's marking an in. So I'll hit I for in, and then I like this, and then I'll hit O for out, and I can drag this down. And now we have another shot in our story. Now let's say at the end, he gets up at the top, and he's standing up at the top, really cool. Same thing, in, out, grab this, and drag it down. So now we have our basic story. We have the beginning, we have the middle, and we have the end. The other part about editing is playing through it and just seeing if you like it. So let's just hit spacebar and see what we think. It's cool, he's tying his rope. I feel like he ties his rope for a really long time, so we don't have to show this for as long. Let's just play it back eh, right about there and I'll hit spacebar right about the time that I want that shot to end. And then I can grab this edge and bring it down I can grab the rest of this and 
bring it over. What I can also do if I need to trim something like that is if I have that trimmed, I can select this empty space and hit delete on the keyboard and that will move everything over. That's an easy way to get rid of a gap. If I don't wanna do any of that, if I just wanna trim this and not worry about grabbing everything and moving it back down, I can use a different kind of edit mode. And what that basically means is just your cursor does something different. So up here, we're in selection mode. The second icon over is trim edit mode. You can also hit T on the keyboard to activate that. And when that's red, that's active. And your cursor turns to this like double bracket thing. But if you grab the edge this time, look what happens. It just moves everything over with it. And so you don't have that gap. You don't have to move everything afterwards. And it's a really quick way to kind of trim shots and adjust their timing a little bit easier. That's good. Let's climb it up here. This one's way too long. So we're gonna do the same thing in trim edit mode. I'm gonna grab this edge and just bring it down. There we go. By the way, if you want to scroll and kind of move back and forth in the timeline, you can click and hold with the middle button on your mouse. That's like pushing down on the scroll wheel. You can kind of grab the background here and move this view around. That actually works for everything in Resolve. If you middle button mouse click, you can move things around like this. So now we have our edit. Looks pretty good. If you wanna get a little more detailed with your editing, you'll probably want to zoom in and out of the timeline. You can do that with this little slider right here. If you hit plus, it zooms in, and minus, it zooms out. You can also hold down alt on the keyboard and roll with your scroll wheel to zoom in. That's a great way to do it. And if you wanna just see everything laid out in your window really nicely, you can hit shift Z. You can remember that like shift zoom. And that'll just zoom everything so that you can see your whole timeline. So. That's a basic way to edit our video tracks. There's a lot more to go over, but if you just know this stuff, you're gonna do really well and be able to make a ton of different kinds of videos. But we've just been working with video tracks. What about audio? Well, let's grab some audio and put it into our media pool. I have a couple things. I have a voiceover and some music. Grab that and just drag that into our media pool, just like that. And just like video, if we double click, we can actually preview and kind of listen to this before we even put it into our timeline. My name's David and I'm a professional climber. So we have this voiceover and what this is doing is just telling a story that we can make a little bit better with our visuals. And audio works exactly like video here in Resolve. I can set an in and an out, so I'll hit I for in and I can play this back. My name's David and I'm a professional climber. And let's say I just want this line. I can hit O for out and I can just grab the middle of this and drag it down. But this time I'm going to drag it down to this track below, which is our audio track. And this again works exactly like video. I can grab this and move it around. I can grab the edges and trim it. And I can put this exactly where I want in the story. So let's say we want to start out with him saying, my name's David. My name's David and I'm a professional climber. I think that works great. So from there we can just grab our different lines and climbing for me is the next best thing to flying. Start to build our story here. We can even just set our in and our out at the very end and grab this and drag it down and just edit it in the timeline. Same thing. So I can chop it up. And depending on what you prefer, this might be a better way an easier way. I tend to kind of go back and forth between doing it this way and then just grabbing pieces and bringing them into the timeline. But now we have all of our different audio lines here. And if we listen back, we'll notice that this isn't perfect. And I'm a professional climber. Climbing for me is the next best thing to flying. When you're 20, 30, 100 feet off the ground, Everything else in life just kind of put gets when you're like 20. So this part right here, our voiceover guy kind of messed up. And so we can get rid of that, right? I'll just hit backspace and we can just use the good take. When you're like 20, 30, 100 feet off the ground, everything in life just kind of gets put in perspective. When you reach the top, there's nothing like it. 
Great. And then it's just a matter of figuring out, okay, where does this audio go to tell the story better? Where does the video go to tell the story better? We can put this part where he says, when you reach the top right here, when you reach the top, there's nothing like it. So that tells a nice little story. Now, if we're going to add some music, again, it works basically the same way. We're just dealing with a big, long music track. So I'll grab this and drag that down. But this time I'm going to grab it and drag it down into a second audio track. So this is like just another layer of audio here. So we can have our voiceover playing at the same time when our music is playing. So we can just put our music under our voiceover and we'll be able to hear him talking while the music is playing. My name's David and I'm a professional climber. Climbing for me is... Of course, we have one problem automatically already, and that's that this music is way, way too loud. One way that we could fix that is grab the bottom of this track right here on the left-hand side and drag it down to make the audio a little bit bigger. And then if you look really closely, there's a little white line here. This is our volume line. So you can grab that volume line and move it up and down, and you see how it pushes that waveform and it makes it look a lot stronger. You can bring that down to be quieter, just like this. You just drag it down. And now, professional climber. Climbing for me is the next best thing to flying. It's a lot easier to hear the voice over that music. Another really powerful way to edit things like the volume of a clip is in the inspector, which we haven't even talked about yet, and it's super important. So if you select a clip like this, this can be an audio clip or a video clip, and then you go up to the upper right-hand corner of Resolve. If you click on Inspector, it'll bring up this little control panel here. This is a way to control the details, the properties of anything that you have selected down here in the timeline. So if you have audio selected, you'll be able to adjust volume. So I can bring that down a little bit, the pan, whether it's you know in the left or right hand speaker, the pitch, and even put audio filters and everything on it. It's really, really powerful. So same thing with audio. If I click on one of these clips up here in the inspector, there's all different kinds of things that we can do to it. So if we wanna do something like rotate this, we can grab the slider and rotate it and click on this little circle arrow to reset things. Anytime that you see a number, if you put your mouse over it, your mouse will turn into this little double arrow. That means you can grab it and just slide the number. And so we could zoom this in if we wanted to. We could change the position of it. And I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to adjusting all kinds of things here in the inspector. There's some really, really cool stuff you can do. You can even crop things to combine shots on different layers. So if we were to grab this and put this over another video track here. We can put this layer over another one and do all kinds of fancy composites that way, which is pretty neat. Feet off the ground. So you can get some really fancy results just by messing with stuff here in the inspector. But a great way to remember this is anytime that you want to adjust a detail of something here in the timeline, you select it and then go up to the inspector to do so. And this is something that's universal within all of Resolve. Pretty much everything that you select, you adjust details with in some kind of inspector, whether it's in the edit page or in the other pages. So we have a pretty good story going on here, but look how long this music is. We need to do something about this. The very easiest way to just make some music shorter is just to cut this off about where we want. So I can grab my razor and just cut it right there and then select that second part and delete it. And obviously we have it shorter now. So it just kind of ends. But let's say we want this to fade out. The easiest way to fade something in or out inside of Resolve is just to grab this little white handle and drag it in. And now this will fade out over time. Check this out. There's nothing like it. And this kind of thing actually works pretty well, especially for something like a YouTube video, because you'll generally have a end screen of some kind. And just the ending of a YouTube video just doesn't really have to feel like it wraps up everything necessarily. It can kind of just end because generally you want people to watch the next YouTube video, right? And so often what I'll do is just let this play for 10 seconds or so, and then just fade it out. Here's the end of the video. You reach the top. There's nothing like it. And then we can just show links to the other videos here. And that totally works great for YouTube. Now, if you do want to make this ending a little bit nicer, we can do this a little bit of a different way. So I'll just hit Control Z until we're back to where we were. And one thing that I like to do is just go to the very end of a clip of music and play just the end and see what that sounds like.
because usually he'll have an ending that actually kind of has a resolution like that. So right here where it goes bloom, right there, this is going to be the very ending. This is like the last note, okay? And now all we have to do is find a similar note right here, generally after a measure, if you know anything about how music works. There's nothing like it. So it might work right there. Usually what I do is just play through this and then I hit spacebar right when that note happens. And so we'll split this right here and I'll select this middle part right here and just hit delete on the keyboard and that will bring the ending in. So we're just cutting from in the middle of the song to the ending and let's see how it sounds. And it's not quite right. So what we can do is nudge this back and forth if we select this we can hit the comma and period keys to move it back and forth like this. And so we can just move this one frame this way and see how it sounds. All right. And to smooth it out a little bit, we can do a crossfade. An easy way to do that is just to right click right here when you have two brackets and add one of these crossfades. I'll just say 12 frame crossfade. See how that sounds. See, that totally works. There, it feels like it should end there. So there's our ending. And let's say this is looking great and all we wanna do is add some titles to the end. You can add text or effects or solid colors or all kinds of stuff using the effects library. If you go in the upper left-hand corner, there's a button called effects library right here. And if you click on that, your effects library will come up right here. There's all kinds of different transitions and things. So you can take something like a transition and drag it in between two clips and it will have that nice little transition in between. Those are really fun. But another major thing that you'll find in the effects library are titles. There's all kinds to choose from. These top ones are a little bit easier for Resolve to play back and the bottom ones are fancier, but they take a little bit more computer power. And so if we just want some basic text, we can just grab text and we can drag this over to the end of our sequence here. And then it just acts just like a video clip or an audio clip, right? You can trim it, you can do all the things that you would normally do. You can even put it on top of things to put text over something, or you can put it on its own line to just have it on black. That's what we'll do right now. And again, if you have something selected, you can go up to the inspector in the upper right-hand corner and adjust things about it. So we can adjust the actual text This video's climbing is fun. That's what it's called. And let's pick a font. So there's our text. We can make that only show up for as long as we want. And we can time this out with the music too. So, so this appears right here where it goes psh. We can have that come in right there. And we can actually see it on the waveform here. That's a great way to time things, is if you can line up the edge of this with this little bump on the waveform, that's a great way to make sure that you're kind of cutting things on beat. Now let's say we wanna make a title that's similar to this. We could drag this text down here and change everything again, but the easiest way is just to duplicate this one. And the easiest way to duplicate it is to hold down Alt and grab it and just drag it somewhere else. And that will make a new copy of this. Now we can select this one, go up to our inspector and say, edited by John Jacobs, right? And you can kind of start your credits this way. And you could go on and build a whole bunch of credits if you want to. Or if you wanted to have scrolling credits, there's a title here called scroll. You can grab that, put that here, and this will roll whatever credits you want to put in here. So our movie's looking pretty good. A couple things to note to be aware of. This is only one page of Resolve. This is like only one thing that Resolve does. So you can obviously edit videos and you can output a video like this and it would be okay. But there are also these other pages. And what these do are fancy things to this exact same timeline. Probably the easiest one to understand is color. If we go to the color page, just click on that, that moves our entire timeline that we were working on into the color page. And now we can select each clip and we can adjust its colors. 
So if you're familiar with any kind of image editing program like Photoshop or whatever, you have curves, you have hue saturation controls and everything. And this is really more than we can get into now, but just so you know, you can adjust your colors and really make some unique looks for your video. And you can even take that same look and copy it to everything so that your whole video can look really nice. You can even do fancy things like select a part of your shot and brighten it up to stand out a little bit more. So now we're kind of highlighting this little guy and it's a lot of fun. I actually have a video on just kind of an intro to color correction right here. If you're unfamiliar with it, definitely check that out. But each of these pages does something different. So Fairlight is all about audio. So you can get really, really detailed with your audio. You can put on filters and all kinds of things. And anybody who is really familiar with audio production will be right at home in the Fairlight page. There's also the Fusion page. And the Fusion page does fancy stuff like compositing, like the fancy stuff that you would probably do in Photoshop, you can do inside of Fusion. So you can do something like add some clouds to this thing to give that sky a little bit more character, right? That's the kind of stuff that you can do inside of Fusion. And it's really neat. So let's say that we like our project and it's ready to go. If we're going to render this as a YouTube video, which we're kind of assuming for this particular training, there's a couple different ways to do that. The very first easiest way is just to go up to file and quick export. What that'll do is give you some of the most basic settings for exporting your movie. You can click on the YouTube preset and it will give you a pretty good render to upload to YouTube. You can even check this box and upload directly to YouTube if you're signed in in your preferences. So you can go to DaVinci Resolve, to Preferences, and under Internet Accounts, you can sign in here. You can even sign into Vimeo or Twitter or Frame.io to upload things directly to those platforms. Pretty cool. Once you have that, if you have this upload directly to YouTube checked, you can put in your title and description and everything and upload right from Resolve, which I use this all the time. Super helpful. But if you want your video to look the very best, you're probably going to want to adjust the settings a little bit. So if we go to Deliver over here, click on Deliver. This is our deliver page. And this is just the page that specializes in rendering, in exporting your movie so people can actually see it. And just like the quick export thing, we have our presets up here. And if you click on YouTube, that will set all of your settings. But one thing to note is that it doesn't quite use the very best settings. It uses one that will look pretty good. But if you want your footage to look super awesome, you're gonna to wanna to dive into the custom settings here. So I'll just click on custom. And what it's gonna do is load all of those settings from our YouTube preset into this custom preset. And let's go down here. The big thing I would recommend changing would be this number right here where it says restrict to. Depending on the type of movie you want, I would probably make this around 60,000 or so. That's gonna give you a lot better image. It's going to be a bigger file, but it's gonna be a lot better. The other thing I would do is take this resolution and make this Ultra HD. If you have room on your hard drive, if you have some time to wait for this to upload, this is going to look noticeably better. Even if you shot things in HD, you didn't shoot in 4K or anything like that. I've done a bunch of tests and this makes it look really, really good. So I would definitely recommend changing to those things. And on the studio version, you can switch this codec to H.265, which is even better. H.264 works and will look awesome, but H.265 looks just a little better. So if we have all of that set, we can click Add to Render Queue. It's going to ask me where to put this movie. I'll put it somewhere pro like the desktop, and I'll call it Untitled because I'm just the best. And then it's going to give me a warning. It's going to say, hey, you said to render this in Ultra HD, and everything in your timeline is regular HD. So what are you doing? And you just say, I know what I'm doing. Just say, just say add. It's fine. Then it pops up over here. And this is the render queue. This is just a like to do list for Resolve to render a bunch of stuff. So what you can do is you can make a bunch of different versions. You can make one for Twitter. You can make one for YouTube. You can make one to just save on your system, all with different settings if you want to and add them all to render queue and it'll just stack them over here. But once you have all of the things that you want to render, we're just going to render our YouTube version. You can click render all. And what that'll do is start the render and it'll go through your movie and it'll save it out. I'm just going to stop this for the training, but that's how you do it. And then you find the file on your system and you can upload it or you can show it to your friends or whatever you want to do. So that's really the basics of how to get some footage into Resolve and edit a video. Before we go, I do want to make you aware of a couple things. 
First of all, anytime that you set up an edit, you wanna make sure that you have your settings right. So if we go down to the lower right-hand corner, let's click on this little settings cog, that'll bring up our project settings. And the biggest deal is this part right here. You wanna make sure that your timeline resolution and your frame rate are right. And when I say right, I mean generally what you shot it at. So if your camera shoots at 30 frames a second, you wanna make sure that your frame rate is 30 frames a second. All my footage is 24, so this was fine. You can set your timeline resolution. You can actually change this at any time, but the timeline and frame rate, you can only change at the beginning, like before you add footage to it. See, it's kind of locked right now. So we always wanna make sure that that is set right. That's really, really important. So if you're gonna start a new project, always make sure to check this first. But that's pretty much the basics of putting together a video just in general and especially how it works inside of Resolve. Again, I mean, if you learn this basic way of doing it, that media lives up here, you drag it to the timeline in some way, and then you can manipulate it and move stuff around, stack layers of things, adjust your audio. You select something here and you can adjust the properties of it. This is how it works in almost every editing program, pretty much the same way. Instead of the inspector, they might call it the properties. Instead of the effects library, they might just call it effects. Instead of the media pool, they might call it the project panel. Instead of the timeline, it might be a sequence, but they're all basically the same thing. But we did it. Isn't that, isn't that great? So there you go. There's the basics of video editing inside of Resolve. If you want to dive a little bit deeper and go hardcore when it comes to video production, we have an amazing training course that teaches you how to do the whole YouTube editing thing, where we edit four different YouTube videos all together. You're going to learn everything you need to know to make your next great YouTube project in Resolve. You can download footage and follow along and just learn the heck out of this thing. That's where you click for that to happen. Because I mean, you got through this video. You at least tolerate me enough to do that. Maybe that's the next level, 2.0. Maybe so. That rhymed all the time.